from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Peter Murphy begins now. Well, good evening. It didn't look like it an hour ago, but we are coming live to you tonight despite a major global technology outage which has affected banks, supermarkets, airlines and in particular broadcasters like us. It's a catastrophic failure that's being investigated as we speak and it means our bulletin will look a little different tonight. We'll bring you all the local stories we've been able to prepare and then to complete the picture we'll hand over to our partners at 7 in Melbourne to finish the hour off. Now for more details on the uh, catastrophic situation as it stands locally, we'll cross live to Nick Kelly. Uh, Nick's out and about. It's being described, Nick, as the biggest computer outage in history. Oh, you're absolutely right there, Murph. Uh, this is absolutely unprecedented. IT experts are telling us it's affecting almost every industry, every business right around the world, from banks to supermarkets and airlines. As you said, even we've been affected. I was hard at work at my computer about half past two this afternoon when up popped the dreaded blue. Checkouts are closed with that dreaded blue screen of death up on the screen. But they are still processing uh, sales. It does seem to be cash only, however. Um, Murph, um, in, importantly, triple zero calls are still operating, we have been told. Uh, and most critically, we are being advised at the moment that it's understood that this is not a, a cyber attack. It is, however, um, a problem with um, some uh, antivirus software that's operating the cloud that seems to be affecting every computer that is running Microsoft Windows. Uh, goes right over my head. I'm sure it goes right over your head too, Murph. But good to know that uh, this is not a cyber attack at this stage. Yeah, lots goes over my head, uh, Nick. Uh, you didn't have much time to get that together, so we appreciate that hard work you've put in just there. Uh, Nick Kelly out and about uh, telling us about that outage that's been happening today. To the day's other news, a Supreme Court judge has taken to the stand to testify on the fifth day as he faces abuse and intimidation charges. Justice Gregory Geeson contested multiple allegations he exercised controlling behaviour towards the alleged victim walking with his family in tow. A Supreme Court judge fighting abuse charges prepares to defend himself, a first in Tasmanian history. The hearing before a visiting Victorian magistrate heard various denials of controlling or aggressive behaviour towards the victim, who cannot be named due to legal reasons, in the lead up to an incident last October. The accused stating he contributed extensively to the relationship, paying for dinners, flights, hotels and even shared music streaming services. When questioned whether he was using it to exercise controlling behaviour towards the victim, he vigorously rejected the accusation, claiming, I wasn't the happiest man as a judge. I found it a draining and demanding occupation. The accused also denying he installed a tracking device on the victim's phone in an effort to control her whereabouts, reputing the notion he was a jealous partner, stating I can be insecure and can be insecure and we were both very much into the idea of building each other up. I reject that characterisation. Mr Geeson's time in the witness stand isn't over, expected to return when the hearing continues next week to tell more about his recollection of the events leading up to the October incident. Lily Thompson, 7 Tasmania News. RSL Tasmania has written to the Premier strongly criticising the new Mac Point Stadium design. It says the new layout doesn't allay its concerns over the size and height of the project, which it fears will destroy sight lines critical to the sanctity of the cenotaph. The oldest state cenotaph in Australia commemorating those who served and died in conflict. Now, according to the state's largest ex-service organisation, it's under threat. The RSL says the government's proposed Macquarie Point Stadium will disrespect the sacred monument. At 95 metres and at 54 metres high, what else do we need to do to disrespect the cenotaph? With concerns, it would dwarf Hobart's cenotaph, potentially destroying key sight lines. The cenotaph was placed behind us because of its views, its sight lines. Including the Derwent River, Battery Point and St George's Church. But the government's adamant the proposed stadium has been carefully designed, saying the RSL was advised earlier this month that only two sight lines will be partially impacted. 
RSL says the site has served as a critical place of commemoration in Tasmania for nearly a century. We gather for Anzac Day. This is where we gather for Remembrance Day. This is where we gather to remember those that gave the ultimate sacrifice. And that the government shouldn't disregard any protected heritage site important to the community. The government says that the design takes account of the surrounding areas, the history and the character of the site. So we will keep working with the RSL. We're really aware of how they're feeling and uh, really wanting to work with them. Rebecca Gadineris at 7, Tasmania News. Now, rather than lighting up our winter, next month's Beaker Street Festival is encouraging us all to turn off the lights. It's an idea from an unexpected source that's led our tourism industry to promote the dark side of Tasmanian life. We've been looking to the skies for inspiration for thousands of years, but it's an eight-year-old from Hobart who's inspired a new winter tourism push. What a little legend. Jonah Kieran doesn't consider himself an astronomy aficionado, but his stars aligned when his children's submission to Hobart's mayor became a focal point for this year's Beaker Street Festival. Jonah had his eye on the environment. Because it helps the nocturnal animals and the stars are beautiful. His idea to turn down the lights and turn on the stars, illuminating a Tassie tourism advantage. And we've had reports from visitors from Singapore who've been out to places in the middle of Tasmania and they said this was the first time they'd ever seen the stars. With its science focus, this year's Beaker Street Festival will lean in to the wonders of the universe, motivated by Jonah's idea. And there's really no better way to experience that wonder than through looking up at the night sky and seeing the stars. And it's won him friends from those campaigning to reduce our reliance on street lighting. It's a fantastic concept and uh, the reality is what Jonah's sort of uh, alluding to we've seen happen in other parts of the world already uh, and we know that it has a positive impact. Something our pint-sized tourism promoter will continue to ponder as he looks out into the night sky. Beautiful and if we don't turn down the lights, we won't be able to see it. Gavin McDougall, 7 Tasmania News. The state government is hoping cash incentives worth thousands of dollars will lure more teachers to Tasmania's rural and regional areas. They'll be paid an extra $1,000 in the first term at an eligible school and an extra payment of more than $2,000 in Term 3. Negotiations with the Australian Teachers Union on the scheme are set to begin shortly. The Tasmanian men knew what to expect from Queensland in last month's rep match, but tomorrow against the best of Sydney and Canberra, it'll be a whole new kettle of fish. With little known about the combined opponent, the Devils are hoping the experience of their list will hold them in good stead. The women are feeling confident too, having trained well since being taken by surprise in Queensland. They had so many well thought out plays and you can just tell that they knew each other and that they've been training with each other for a really long time. It was a complete jump from rep footy straight to state. Tickets are still available to tomorrow's quadruple header at UTAS Stadium, starting with the Talent League teams against the Western Jets. And of course, due to that uh, major technological outage we've had worldwide, uh, you probably all know about it by now, that's where we have to leave you from our studios here at 7 Tasmania. You can stay tuned for coverage from our network partners at Channel 7 in Melbourne. We'll join them now. And moves. <laughs> Donald Trump is many things, not least of all a convicted criminal and a sex offender. But all his supporters here can see is a strong man, a hard man of American politics, and they're banking on that strength now carrying the party to victory in November. Which looks like a good bet with the Democrats in chaos. <laughs> <laughs> and Joe Biden hanging on by a thread in isolation after catching COVID and no doubt feeling isolated after even Barack Obama told him it's time to go. So today, we are 110 days out from the election. Biden's most likely replacement to run against Donald Trump, doing her best to appear presidential. Do we believe in the promise of America? Yeah. And are we ready to fight for it? Yeah. But it was never going to match a week of Republican, red, white and blue. So tonight, with faith 
and devotion, I proudly accept your nomination for President of the United States. And a candidate who's still wounded, but wound up. In Milwaukee, David Woywood, 7 News. Back home now, there's been a bombshell development in the High Country murder trial, with convicted killer Greg Lynn set to appeal the verdict. The former Jetstar pilot was back in court today after a jury found him guilty of fatally shooting camper Carol Clay. Walking back into the courtroom, a convicted killer who maintains his innocence. Lawyers for former Jetstar pilot Greg Lynn indicating he will appeal his murder conviction over the shooting death of Carol Clay. Last month, he was found not guilty for the death of her lover, Russell Hill, in Victoria's high country in 2020. The defence telling the court Mr Lynn maintains that he has never killed any person at any time, at any place, anywhere, ever. Of course he would. <laughs> Who else was there to prove it otherwise? For the families of Ms Clay and Mr Hill, it's another delay to closure. How can they change what was said at the jury? The defence argued during the trial that prosecution broke the rules up to 25 times, also raising concerns about how the jury reached the verdicts, claiming there were inconsistencies.